Welcome to today's Think on This Battle Ready Podcast. Please join us as we journey through the written Word of God in biblical truths and spiritual insights. We hope you enjoy today's podcast. God bless you. I was reading my Word tonight, and I was going over 1 Samuel chapter 8. And as I began to read it, to be quite honest with you, an urgency dropped in my spirit. And one thing that I know as I share this message with you is that history has a tendency of repeating itself. The Bible clearly states that these things in God's written word are written as examples to you and to me. And if we don't look at these life examples and these life applications, we can fall prey to the same system that the children of Israel did over and over and over. And we can, and it looks like, from what I can see, be a nation that is under bondage. When I was reading this, going all the way back to 1 Samuel chapter 2, all the way through chapter 4, in regards to Eli's sons, and then in chapter 8, in regards to Samuel's sons, where it began was, it began with the priest and the prophet. Now, I'm not saying that Eli was a bad priest, nor am I saying that Samuel was a bad prophet. The Bible says that Samuel was such a powerful prophet that not one word fell to the ground. When he spoke it, it came to pass. The Bible also says that when Samuel would walk into a city, that people would tremble. But it's the generation that followed Eli and Samuel. When they were near death, the Bible says in in 1 Samuel chapter 8, and I'm getting ready to read this. When he was near death, he appointed his sons as judges. Eli appointed his sons as priests. And if we look in 1 Samuel chapter 2, all the way through chapter 4, it says that Eli's sons, Hophni and Phinehas, they were engaging in illicit behavior. They were taking portions of the sacrifice for themselves. And not only that, listen to this. They were having sexual relationships with the sanctuary woman. Sound familiar? This is evidence that history can repeat itself because in this year I have seen more ministers step down, get exposed, get caught in the act of sexual immoral sins. Now listen, I'm not going to talk bad about them, but I'm just stating the fact. And if you open a door to the devil, he will come in and he will bring chaos within the church. And listen, if he can tear down the church, he will tear down the nation. And I wonder why our nation seems like it's going to hell in the handbasket. Because judgment needs to start in the house of God. And listen, last year, me and my friend, Sister Sister Krista, we went into prayer. And one of the petitions, when I prayed for six months straight, every night I went before God and I prayed intensely. And one of my petitions was, God, clean out the pulpit. Now listen, that was including me. I was asking God, God, if I am not in right relationship with you, if I am not the minister that you call me to be, and if I have failed you in any way, then remove me. But if not so, Father God, then I ask the Lord God that you remove those that have perverted that pulpit, that stand behind it, that are doing things with sexual sins, and they are doing things that are bringing illicit behavior to the sanctuary. And lo and behold, it seems like from January of this year all the way till now, we're seeing more and more ministers being exposed and caught in sexual sins. And if you go with me to the book of Judges chapter, uh, excuse me, if you go with me to the book of 1 Samuel chapter 8, you're going to see the same behavior. Because this is what s- strikes me. This is what is concerning to me, brothers and sisters. Now listen to me. And I pray to God you watch this message all the way through. What concerns me is that when the man of God died, and I preached this message before, that if we do not continue and implement into our children and, and just drive it into their hearts, the things of God that we will see and I believe it is possible that we are seeing a generation that does not know our God God help us God help us if we are dealing with a generation that is so much into rebellion and so much into self-centeredness and carelessness calling good evil and calling evil good and, and, and despise you know, you know pleasure uh, lovers of pleasure lovers of money lovers of, of, of evil rather than lovers of good disobedient to parents and I listen parents listen I am saying this through experience I can see that we are on the verge of being dealt with as a nation if we do not if we do not turn as a people our hearts back to God 
One of the things that God says in Malachi chapter 4, it says that in the last days I will send the spirit of Elijah for one purpose, to turn the hearts of the children back to the fathers and to turn the, the hearts of the fathers back to the children. Listen, I believe that God is doing a clarion call to the men. I believe it is about time that we as men rise up and quit acting spineless like Adam when he washed Eve, take the bite of that apple. I believe it is about time that we as men stand between the adversary and stand between that temptation and tell the devil, no, you're not going to have my wife, you're not going to have my children. I believe that it's about time that we stand at the door just like Lot and say, you're not going to have the men, but listen, you're also not going to have the daughters. I would have never, never given my daughters to the men that wanted the angels that visited my house. I would have told them, you're not having anybody. And when I was reading 1 Samuel chapter 8, to be honest with you, like a fear began to grip me because I see history repeating itself. The Bible says in chapter 8 verse 1, Now it came to pass when Samuel was old that he made his sons judges over Israel. Now listen to this. The name of the firstborn was Joel, and the name of the second, Abiah, and they were judges in Beersheba. But his sons did not walk in his ways. They turned aside after dishonest gain, took bribes and perverted justice. Listen, does that sound like our nation today? Come on, in our nation right now, we should have, you know, we have constitutional rights for a speedy trial. We have constitutional rights for change of venue and all these different things. But when I look at our judicial system today, and I'm not talking in, in, in the mass but when I look at certain states and their judicial system and their political drive to destroy people's lives, it makes me sick and it reminds me in the days of 1 Samuel, in the days that Samuel made his sons judges. And what did they do? The Bible says they took bribes and they perverted justice. You tell me if we are not seeing this in our judicial system today. I see corruptness across the board, both in the Republican Party and the Democratic Party. And believe me, I believe that both sides of the party are lining their pockets stick because they don't care a hell of beans about our nation or about the, the body of Christ. I believe that if we do not turn our hearts to God, like 2 Chronicles 7.14 says, listen, brothers and sisters, I believe that persecution will come like we have never seen it before. Like we were saying last night, I've had dreams of an evil entity within the government. Brother Brighton has had dreams. My son Elijah has had dreams. There's other people, Billy Crone, the prophecy watchers, and they said that there is witchcraft that is in the White House. Now listen, this is going all the way back to Abraham Lincoln. And if we do not break this, and if we do not turn our hearts towards God and, and, and run to God, then I, I tell you what, God help us. Because just like Samuel's sons, we are seeing evil. Evil has crept into the church. He was a priest. His sons did wrong. Samuel was a prophet. His sons became judge and they perverted the judicial system. And we are seeing the same thing today. And God help us. The Bible says, Then all the elders of Israel gathered together and came to Samuel at Ramah and said to him, Look, you are old and your sons do not walk in your ways. Now watch this. Now their argument was correct. They came to the prophet Samuel and they're saying, you're getting old. And your sons are not following, you know, and, and, and walking in your ways. You're a man of integrity, but your children are not walking in your ways. But listen to what they say. I'm telling you, listen, insult to injury. Now make us a king to judge us like all nations. This to me is what broke the hair that broke the camel's back. Same thing when a current president stood on the White House lawn, lawn and said that, that marriage is between man and a man, woman and a woman. And when he signed that bill, I believe that he put a curse over our nation. And where was the church? Listen, where was the body of Christ? You want to know where the church was? Evidently, they were falling into sexual sins because based on all these ministers that have been getting caught, based on all these, these judges that have, exp that have perverted the judicial system. My question to you is, where were we as the body of Christ? And it is about time that we rise up as a nation. It is about time that we stand hand in hand and put our face like a flint towards the heart of God. It is about time that we cry out to God and say, God, not on our watch, amen. It is about time that we press into the heart of God and believe God that God will put His man, not 
I, listen, I don't want to be like another nation. I don't want to be like uh, China or Asia or, or Russia or any of those. I don't want to be a communist country. I want to be one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Amen. They came to the prophet Samuel and said, make us a king. Give us a king that we may be like all other nations. And I believe right now through America, this is a cry of most people's hearts. They want somebody that will line their pockets in their thinking. They want that Democrat president behind that, 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 that podium so they can give us and, and keep the keep, you know, president, keep those programs going. Keep the grants going. Keep the funding going so I can be codependent on you and not codependent on God. Shame on us as the body of Christ. Listen, and I said this before. And I'm saying this to the Native American people. In the 1800s, they made an act called the Relocation Act. They put our Native people on the reservations. How is it that after 100 years, we're still on the reservation? How is it that we are, 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 are insanely obsessed with this Democratic Party that has oppressed us and kept us into bondage? Listen, I'll give an example. The, the reservation that's not far from here north of, of Minot. That reservation is still on that six by seven mile block after 100 years. How is it that they are still stuck in that same mentality waiting for a handout from the government when we serve a God that owns a cattle upon a thousand hills? When we serve the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? When we serve a God that sets us free? The Bible says in John 8, whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Why is it that our people on our reservations are so in bondage to drugs and alcohol? The suicide rate is high. The dropout of school rate is high. The, the single parents is high. Dads are leaving. There's more single moms on reservations. Teenagers are becoming pregnant. Why is it? Because we want a king so we can be like all the other nations. When Jesus Christ, the King of Kings, is crying out to us, saying, turn towards me, turn towards me, then I will hear from heaven, then I will forgive you of your sins, and then I will heal your land. And Samuel but this thing, verse 6, displeased Samuel when they said, give us a king to judge us. So Samuel prayed to the Lord. And I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, I'm going to be honest with you. It's, it, 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 it discourages me when I have a war room open for all those that are part of this Battle Ready family. It discourages me when I only see four or five people that have a devotion within their heart to pray for our nation. Listen, your life may, in your mind, be going good. You might have money in your pocket and you might have that good job. But listen, if we fall prey to this communist mentality, this wokenism, then I'm going to tell you, those, this life that you know it, this liberty that we so enjoy in the Constitution that we so have, it can be taken from us with an instant, instance. And if we are not careful, we will fall prey to the very same thing I'm about to read you. And the Lord said to Samuel, heed the voice of the people. What did he say? Hear the voice of the people in that they say to you, for they have not rejected you, but they have rejected me that I should not reign over them. What did God say to the prophet Samuel? Give them what they want. And this is what's making me afraid tonight when I was reading this. This is what grips me with fear. That if we are not careful and if we are not searching the heart of God, that listen, God will give us over to our reprobate mind like Romans chapter 1 says. God will give us exactly what we want. He will give us the president that we want. And I'm telling you what, it will come with a price. In verse 8, according to all the works which they have done since the day that I have brought them up out of Egypt, even to this day which they have forsaken me and served other gods, so they are doing it to you also. Now, therefore, heed their voice, however, you shall now listen to verse 9, you shall so solemnly forewarn them and show them the behavior of the king who will reign over them. What did God say to the prophet Samuel? If that's what they want, if that person that they're voting for is who they want in the White House, and it, it is not God's person, this is what God is saying. We'll warn you that this is the behavior of the president that will reign over you. So Samuel told the words of the Lord to the people who asked him for a king. And he said, this will be the behavior of the king who will reign over you. He will take your sons and appoint them for his own chariots and to be his horsemen. And some will run before his chariots. He will appoint captains over his thousands and captains over his fifties. He will set some to plow his ground and reap his harvest. And some to make his weapons of war and equipment for his chariots. He will take the daughters to be perfumers, cooks, and bakers. He will take the best of your fields your vineyards and your olive groves and give them to his servants. And he will take a tenth of your grain and your vintage and give it to the officers and the servants. He will make your male servants and your female servants 
and your finest men and your donkeys. He will put them to his work. Listen, do you think it was by chance that a lot of these reservations had land, buy land buyback? Read between the lines. There's an agenda because listen, for us on the reservation, listen, there is an agenda. If you can watch a 2020, uh, if you can watch the 2020 episode when there was an interview with Barack Obama, if you can watch this episode, he plainly says that he believes that Native Americans should grow up and could be codependent upon the government and that his goal was to take the reservations away from the Native American people. And that is probably a king that you wanted, right? And if I offend you, I'm sorry, but I tell you what, what I see is coming to our nation if we don't turn our hearts to God is absolute chaos. Then it goes on to say here, he will take tenth of your sheep and he will be your servant and you will cry out in the day because of your king whom you have chosen yourself. The Lord will not hear you in this day. And I am warning you, brothers and sisters, and I am warning you all that watch this. Be very careful of who you vote for. I'm not telling you to vote for anybody. Listen, I put that into the hands of God. But what I'm saying is this, you better go to God and you better say, God, who do you want behind that podium and that White House? Who do you want to lead this nation? Because if you are looking at somebody based on race, color, creed, uh, or anything else that is contrary to the moral laws of God, then listen, you've already failed yourself right there. You want a nation and, and, and a, a nation that's under God and a, a nation that you can pass on to your generations that follow us. A nation of success, a, a nation of holiness and righteousness. Listen to verse 19. I'll go back to verse 18. And you will cry out in that day because of your king whom you have chosen for yourself, for the Lord will not hear you in that day. Now listen to verse 19. And I wouldn't be shocked as some of you don't care hill of beans of what I'm saying. I'm going to be honest with you. I wouldn't be shocked because some of you have already bitten in, bit that apple that looks good. Broken promises. Broken promises. I say this again. Why are our Native Americans still on that little piece of land that was given us over 100 years ago? Why is it? Why is it that most Native Americans are still on that piece of land? So afraid to go outside of those four walls. Listen, it is my passion, it is my desire to see. You listen, you want to see history? My passion, my desire is to see a Native American as a president. My passion, my desire is to see Native American actors, basketball players, politicians, uh, uh, pastors, preachers, teachers, evangelists, you name it. That's my passion. But not to be on the four walls of that reservation in bondage. I can go to any reservation and I can guarantee you that if I was to go to any reservation, I would see nothing but chaos, run-down homes, trashy yards. I would see nothing but 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 uh, 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 in bondage, addiction, to fentanyl, to all kinds of drugs, to opioids, alcohol, and all these different things. And listen, not at fault of the good people on the reservation. I'm not saying that. It has nothing to do with the people there. It's this system that we have fell prey to that has kept us in bondage for years upon years. And it is my prayer that, as Oil Roberts said, that God, or Billy Graham, it is my prayer that, as Billy Graham said, that God awakens the sleeping giant and that our Native, America, uh, our Native Americans wake up and rise up as mighty warriors as God called us to be. Verse 19, nevertheless, the people refused to obey the voice of Samuel. And they said, no, but we will have a king over us. You want to know one of the saddest things is, and I say this with, with such urgency within my spirit. One of the saddest things is, is I can stand behind in front of this camera and I can petition you to pray that God would put his person in there. But some of you have already set in your heart who you're going to vote for without regarding God in any way. And I say to you, nevertheless, when you cry out and you choose a man that you want or a woman that you want behind that podium in the White House and not God, then I'm telling you that our, when we cry out, when our children are oppressed, when we fall under this wokeness ideology and to this identity crisis that we're facing, and to me, listen, it's already been a proven fact since a certain president took office all the way till now. It seems like our nation has gone to hell in a handbasket and it is continuing, continuing to go to hell 
if we don't stand up and fight back. It started within the church. And I hate to say this, and I say this even in America. The reason why our nation is the way that it is, is the fault is on the nation, is on the church. In big part, it's on us as ministers. And I repent and I say, God, forgive me in any way that I as a minister have failed you. Cause me to be that man of God that you have called me to be. And Father God, if I fail you in any way, if I fall to Hophni and Phineas' demise, or if I fall to the sons of, of Samuel's demise, Lord God, then I am asking you that you would remove me, Father God, and that, that you would bring the men and women of God that you've called to stand behind that holy pulpit to represent you in a way. Verse 20. Now we also may be like all the nations that our king may judge us and go up before us and fight our battles. They didn't have enough faith in God and believe God, not only for provision, but for protection. And all the way up to this point, God did nothing but bring provision to them. He brought Moses into the courtyards of Pharaoh and he brought him out of bondage. They were brought out of bondage in Babylon. He brought provision to where their sandals never wore out when they went through the 40 years in the wilderness. Time and time again, God showed himself strong. But time and time again, the nation of Israel turned from the God of Israel, a God of Abraham, Jacob, and Isaac. And Samuel heard, verse 21, these words of the people, and he repeated them in the hearing of the Lord. And, Lord, and the Lord said to Samuel, Heed their voice. Now, this is one thing that scares me. Because when I pray, I don't say, put a certain president in there because I like him or because he, he sides with the Christians. I don't pray that way. How I pray is, God, you put your person in that White House. You put the person that's going to do the best for this nation. Because, listen, only one of two things are going to happen. If we do not turn to the heart of God and ask God to put his man in there, then God will put man's man in there, and we will suffer the consequences of it. So the Lord said to Samuel, Heed their voices and make them a king. And Samuel said to the men of Israel, Every man go to his city. And God gave the people exactly what they wanted. I pray, brothers and sisters, and I want you to know I didn't, did not come here on here with the intentions to offend anybody. I'm so sick and tired of being sick and tired. I'm so tired of this economy that is just draining the pockets. I'm tired of working seven days a week in the mornings, and, and, and I, I'm, I'm, by the time I come home to try to do the things of God, at times I'm sober and tired, but I still do it. But I see in, in the people that I talk to, I see the brokenness, I see the pain, and I see the hurt. But I know the answer. His name's Jesus. I know the answer to alcohol and drug addiction. His name's Jesus. I know the answer to all life's problems, to the sphere that is plaguing our nation. His name's Jesus. I know the answer of who should be in that White House. His name is Jesus. I know the answer who should be in that courthouse. His name is Jesus. In the schoolhouse, His name is Jesus. In the jailhouse, His name is Jesus. And if we do not turn our hearts towards God, this is what scares me, brothers and sisters. If we do not seriously turn our hearts towards God and seek His face, that He will give us you, I'm not going to say me because I am, I'm praying God's will, but He will give you exactly what you want. And I pray in the name of Jesus that you don't fall to this demise and that we will not see history repeat itself and that we become a nation in so much chaos that we're no longer the beacon of light that we used to be when we would send evangelists throughout the world to save the lost. Father, I thank you, Lord God. I pray, Father God, that this word did not bring an offense, but an alert into the heart. God, you put your words into my mouth. I felt compelled to, to share this message. Father God, I will not apologize for your word. Father God, and I ask, Lord God, that those that watch this, that they would think before getting offended, be, be, before uh, 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 unfriending battle ready, that they would be honest with themselves and that they would sit there and that they would pray and that they would be honest with themselves and reflect on the current condition of our nation is who I want behind that podium in the White House, God's person. 
is, is what Brother Lloyd's saying, is it true? Going back to a, a certain president till now, has our nation gone straight downhill? You see it through all of this identity crisis craziness to have men and women identifying as animals, not even knowing who they are. It doesn't take a genius to see that we're in a bad way. But it is my prayer, Father God, that this message will reach their hearts. And Father God, that you would cause us to turn our face to you, Father God, and to repent, to seek your face, to turn from our wicked ways, so you will hear from heaven and that you will heal our land. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you enjoyed today's podcast, we ask that you would consider supporting this ministry. You can be a part of sharing the gospel to the lost through your financial support. God bless you.